Good morning everyone. Uh, today's topic of discussion and video is the operation and overall maintenance, maintenance sorry there's that jersey thing again, um, the maintenance of your CPR um, Tom's brand Aqualifter pump that helps maintain the siphon in your CPR overflow. So I'll basically go over the basic operation here. Um, on each CPR overflow you have this small nipple that it can be used to either start the siphon or to help maintain the siphon while the overflow is in operation, which as you can see that it is currently. Right? So everything's running. So basically, normally once you start the siphon, you would connect a piece of airline tubing from this nipple to the input side. That's the one over here on my right, to the input side of the Tom's Aqualifter pump. And basically an Aqualifter pump works just like a water pump except it's at a much, 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 much slower rate, right? It's not doing 500 gallons per hour or anything, right? And what it does is it just pulls, just like a water pump, and it will pull water and air from this nipple, and it will bring it along and bring it into the pump, and then it will just basically pump it right back out. And you can see the outflow of this is mostly water, as it should be, right? Because if it was have, had it was spitting a lot of air, that would not be good. That means you have a lot of air in the system. Now, that being said, um, I modif you know, I do something slightly different, and I use an inline pump, uh, an inline pump. Listen to me, an inline filter, which um, is a neat little device. Um, and basically, you just connect your nipple input to one side of the filter, and then the other side of the filter basically goes, continues on to the input of the pump. The outlet of the pump doesn't change at all. The reason I do this is because you're drawing water. When you're trying to draw air from the um, overflow, you're also bringing tank water with it. And this is airline tubing and it can get clogged and dirty. And, and sorry about that. I'll show you. I just changed this tubing and here is what the old tubing look like and this is in less than three weeks time so you can you can see that it gets it gets pretty dirty and nasty quickly so I recommend changing I change it pretty much every two or three weeks so when it starts to look dirty because it can and will clog remember it's tank water that you're bringing in through here and it's basically unfiltered so the small filter it just has um it, it comes with a a, a, a prettier uh, media, but I eventually threw it away and replaced it. And this is just basically your, your blue foam, right? And it just traps particulate matter in, in between, right? So that's your basic operation. Sorry for going on so long about that. We're at the three minute mark already. So a lot of people are concerned about the Aqualifter pump because they're like, hey, I hear it breaks down a lot and they stop working and and that can be true. And I recommend that you have a spare. I have multiple because I have three of these overflows in operation right now. So you just never know. Um, but that being said, what I found in my experience is that they don't tend to fail so much as they get clogged and they get dirty. You know, So you can see, if you look at the filter, I mean, there's a good amount of dirt in there. right? And I've also found on my 220, um, you know, so what happens, um, the first time that happened to me, I assumed that the, um, the siphon had failed. I assumed that the Aqualifter pump was to blame. So I replaced it and nothing was happening. I wasn't getting anything out of the outflow. It finally occurred to me that, ah, oh, hmm, maybe there's a clog somewhere. And what happened is, like I said, I never thought to change the airline tubing or to, you know, gently clean out the intake or outtake of the Aqualifter pump, you know, to, to get some dirt and sludge out of there and it builds up over time. So what happened is once I cleaned all that out and replaced the airline tubing, boom, it started right up so I didn't have to replace the pump in that case. Um, so, uh, to clean it, sometimes what I'll do is I'll hook it up to a, a small jar, a, a small tumbler of Excel, and you know, you'd be surprised at how that, that helps clean it up nicely. So, you know, um, a big concern here is that, hey, you know, what happens, sorry, when the Aqualifter pump fails, you know, what's going to happen? It's going to be a, it's gonna be a catastrophe. Well, I'm going to show you what will happen if it goes well. So I'm going to come down here. And then, uh, Unplug it. So here's the end of the plug. You'll have to trust me that it's for the Aqualifter pump, but it is. Why would I lie? So you can see, well, you can't see, but trust me, 
the pump is off, it's not connected, and yet, wow, the overflow is still working. Because what happens is once the siphon is there, it will maintain itself up until such time as you get too much air into the system, right? So an air will get in there over time, you know, due to various reasons. You can even see here, see at the very top of the overflow, I have some, some air bubbles in there. Ordinarily, the aqualifter pump would be sucking, would be pulling that out of there. That's not happening now, right? So then you say, well, gee, what happens, Jer, if you do introduce too much air to the system? So, okay, well, why don't we do that? So I'll just, oops, sorry, I'll just disconnect. I disconnected the, the small nipple, and what's happening is my overflow is becoming less effective. You see the, the, the water level is down, and what's happened now is things have totally stopped, and you know, so nothing's happening. So what I'd have to do is to start the siphon again, and I could do that manually just by pulling on it, right, doing the, you know, and basically that restarts the siphon very easily. You can see the all the air being purged out of the system now. Right? See see all of that? So that that's what will happen is that too much air gets into the system. Eventually it'll purge itself out. Right? It would it would help probably if now I reconnected the aqualifter pump. There we go. So you can see, and it's just pushing, look at how much air that's pushing now, where before it was pushing all the water. Here, that's just, that's just air. So you, can, so you can see the amount of air in the system, but it's going away, going away. Sump is quieter, quieter. All right, it's back up to its former level. The overflow here is starting to work better and better, and you know, we're, we're back to normal. So, you know, that's basically it. Um, again, I recommend putting one of these little filters on and changing the airline tubing regularly. I also recommend periodically taking a, a small, thin something, whatever you have available, and running it through this small nipple because on my 220, it gets clogged a lot. A small piece of hair grass will get in there, and that's a very small... Um, outlet size so you know it could get clogged easily with grit and dirt over time so you, you just want to you know run something through there and do the same for your aqualifter pump or run it through some excel or maybe hydrogen peroxide or something like that and make, put a filter in and maintain your hoses and you know um, maintain, uh, replace them regularly so they don't you know get brittle cracked and, and look ugly and that's it I, I hope that this was helpful to somebody and we'll see you later